Hi guys, Daniel here, and today we are going to do problem number one of the 2015 IMO, this year's IMO. So let's first read the problem. We say that a finite set S of points in the plane is balanced if for any two different points A and B and S, there is a point C and S such that AC equals BC. We say that S is center free if for any three different points A, B, and C and S, there is no points P and S such that PA equals PB equals PC. A show that for all integers n greater than equal to 3, there exists a balanced set consisting of n points, and b, determine all integers n greater than equal to 3, for which there exists a balanced center-free set consisting of points. So first, you can pause the video and try the problem for yourself. Alright, let's begin. So we'll solve part 8 first, and uh, to do this, let's first look at a smaller example, set n equals 3. Well, a solution is simple enough. We just consider an equilateral triangle. We know that for any two points in this equilateral triangle, the third point is obviously equal distance from these two points. So the, we're done in this case. For any equals three, we can just choose an equilateral, equilateral triangle. Now, let's try to use the idea of the equilateral triangle to construct uh, sets of points with n greater than 3, and see if that works. So let's say we have an equilateral, equilateral triangle here. And uh, what if we put another equilateral triangle right here? So now we have two equilateral triangles sharing a vertex. Now for this, these four pairs of points, it's pretty easy to see that it follows the restriction because, for example, for this one, here's the point, and for this, these pair of points, the point is corresponding on the opposite side of the equilateral triangle. And similarly for the other two pairs. However, the thing that remains that we need to check is this pair, this pair, and especially these these pairs, the pairs that aren't part of the equilateral triangles themselves. How do we make sure that those also satisfy the condition? Well, think about it like this. Since these equilateral triangles all have the same side length, we can draw a circle around them, like this. Now, we also know that for any two points on the circle, on the uh, circumference of the circle, their perpendicular bisector intersects the center of the circle. And uh, for any pairs, like this pair or this pair, no matter what pair it is, both points all lie on the circumference of the circle. So that means the center satisfies the condition that AC equals BC, the distance from the center to both points is the same and that's namely the radius of the circle. So we know that for this scenario we have just found a valid set of let's see one two three four five points and uh, we can continue this logic so on for example add two more points to create another equilateral triangle for seven points and then create two more points for another equilateral triangle for nine points and so on. So that means for this uh, construction we can create all all odd n. But what do we do for even n? Well we can create a very similar construction but instead of uh, starting with an equilateral triangle we start with an equilateral triangle plus another point creating two equilateral triangles sharing a side. We note that this configuration also satisfies the condition of balanced. And uh, from this on, we can just keep on adding equilateral triangles here and there to create 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on points. So this configuration works for all even n. 
And since we have found a configuration for both odd n and even n, we are done with part A. Now on to part B. We have to determine all integers n greater than or equal to 3 for which there exists a balance set, which was what we tackled in A. Except for this time, it has to be center free. So all this construction that we just made here actually doesn't work anymore because none of them are center free, except for, I guess, the equilateral triangle for n equals 3, but that's just a trivial case. So what do we do now? Well, first, I claim that all odd n still has a solution, still has a set of points such that it's balanced and center free. But for all even n, this is not possible. We can see that all odd n work by thinking of a different construction that might work. So the circle, having points on the circle is a good idea because uh, any two points on the circle has to pass through the center. So let's see what we can do about that. We can't actually have any points at the center because that would violate the center free condition. But what if we place the points evenly spaced on the circle? For example, if we had seven points and we place it evenly spaced on the circle, sorry, this is a pretty bad drawing. Bear with me here. Then let's see what this gives. Well, if we pick, for example, these two points, then the perpendicular bisector of this segment actually passes through this vertex. And if we po pick, for example, these two points, then the perpendicular bisector passes through this vertex. So it seems like this uh, spacing evenly, uh, the, spacing the points evenly for odd n actually works. And in other words, the points are the vertices of an n-gon, where n is odd. And the proof of this is pretty simple, so I'll just leave it to you. But the bulk of the, this problem now is proving that for all even n, this is not possible. It is not possible to find a uh, set of points which is both balanced and center free. So what should we do for the even case? Well first, let's see what we have. We have n points where n is even. And we want to have for all pairs of points a and b, there's a point c such that AC equals BC. So how many pairs of points are there? Well, there's just N choose 2 equals N times N minus 1 over 2 pairs. Well, what does this mean? This means that if there are N points and uh, for each pair of N times N minus 1 over 2 pairs of points, there exists another point such that that point lies on the perpendicular bisector of the pair of points, which, which means that the distance between that C point is equal to the, I mean, the distance to A is equal to the distance to B, AC equals BC. Then uh, that means for each point, there must be exists an average of n minus 1 over 2 pairs. See, if there are n times n minus 1 over 2 pairs, and uh, we have n points, then uh, for each point, we have an average of, we divide n choose 2 by n, and we get that for each point, an average of n minus 1 over 2 pairs has that point uh, on its perpendicular bisector. So we know that n is even. So that means n minus 1 over 2 is an actually not a whole number. And this is the this is the average average number of pairs per point. So we know that n minus 1 over 2 is not an, a whole number. So that means there exists 
a point such that there are n over 2 pairs per, per that point. Because if all the points had n minus 2 over 2 pairs, then the average couldn't be n minus 1 over 2. There has to be at least one point that has an average of n over 2 pairs that has that point on the perpendicular bisector. So what does that tell us? Well, let's first draw a point here. And now there's, let's, there's a bunch of other points. Here, 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 it doesn't matter where exactly they are. Here, 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 here. But the key thing is that there are n minus 1 points here. Since, well, n points total minus that one equals n minus 1 points. So since there are n minus 1 points in here, then that means we can form at most, at most we can form n minus 2 over 2 pairs of points. Or I can write that as n over 2 minus 1. We can form at most n minus 2 n over 2 minus 1 pairs of points such that they no two pairs share a point. But we have that this point has n over 2 pairs. So that means there exists two pairs of uh points. For example, this one, this one and this one and this one and this one, such that they share one point in common. So now we know that there are three points such that two of them has this special point as on the perpendicular bisector, and uh, some other two of them also have this point on the perpendicular bisector. So what does this mean? Well, if we have uh, three points it's here, here, and here, such that there exists a point in the set S that is on the perpendicular bisector of, for example, these two and these two. Well, then that means that this point is actually the circumcenter of these three points by the definition of the circumcenter. But then that violates the condition that it has to be center free because if for any three different points a, b, and c, and s, there is no point p and s such that p a equals p b equals p c. But clearly, we have that this, this, and this, they're all equal. So that's a contradiction, and therefore, we cannot have that n is even, and therefore, we have proved that for even n, we cannot have a set s satisfying both a balanced and a center-free condition. So today we're going to be studying the Cauchy Swords inequality. I'll try to make this quick because I have to leave soon. So uh, the Cauchy Swords inequality. This is how you spell Cauchy Swords.